Thanks for tuning into this presentation. We're going to provide yet another update for the climate of 2020 2021. We're going to take a look here at March and where we are as it stands for the water year 2020 2021. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist at National Weather Service in San Diego. You can see that the month of March has actually been wet in far southwest California, namely San Diego County. Most of the state, however, has been considerably below normal. Now, when we look at the year to date, since the water year beginning October 1, we can see that the percent of normal is considerably below average, with mainly San Diego County and our mountains of Southern California in the range of 50 to 70 percent, and other areas such as Orange County and our desert areas less than 50 percent of average. When you look at the water year and the percent of average at specific points, we can see the deserts have been much below compared to where they should be. And we have most of our locations below 70% of average. Most noticeable is the Coachella Valley and Orange County, those areas much drier than San Diego region. Now, what's been going on this year? The storm track has been going up over an unusual, unusual is the key word, upper level ridge in the central and eastern Pacific, just dominating and not moving overall since October. This has provided a storm track going to our north, tapping into cold but dry air, then carving across Southern California at times and then ejecting into the lower Rockies and the lower plains. This pattern typically not conducive to wet or above average conditions in California, and in fact, usually below average like we're seeing. Now, how does it compare to last year? Well, overall, we see that massive anomaly or unusual warmth in the atmosphere, deep in the atmosphere and pushing the jet stream far to the north last year as well. This is unusual, this is not normal, and you can see last year, similar track from the north, but it was allowed to carve a little sharper and deeper over Southern California. And that is why last year was much wetter, at least for Southern California. Now, what else do we have going on this year? So La Nina has developed since early this year. In fact, since last summer and conditions peaked out in the fall. So this year we also have La Nina conditions, whereas last year we were in the weak El Nino warm phase conditions. So remember, La Nina is the cool phase. Here is a look at the ocean temperatures right now. As of March 17th, you can see the Enso region is cooler than average, and that is the La Nina that's ongoing. However, in the Western and Central Pacific, much above average, warmer than usual water temperatures continue. You can also see some of the cooler than average temperatures extend all the way up to the California coast and Baja, Mexico. So La Nina conditions are present, but of course this can only explain some of our weather pattern as we saw similar conditions with the weather pattern even last year. Now let's take a look at specific locations such as San Diego, where San Diego is more than four inches below average, Riverside, six, Santa Ana, around seven inches below average to date. Even our inland areas, such as Palm Springs Desert, three and a half inches below average. And if we go up to our mountains, such as Idlewild, despite getting 11 inches of precipitation and a lot of it being snow this year with the cold storm track, they are near nine inches below average to date. Taking a look at the snowpack, and the precipitation, the precipitation across the Sierra Nevada is a good measurement of the water year across the state. You can see that the blue line shows that current conditions are running neck and neck to last year. Remember last year, 2019, we just showed had a very similar pattern coming from the north. We can see conditions in the Sierra Nevada are mimicking last year, 2019, 2020, and are much below average. Take a look at the snowpack. The snowpack has done a little bit better than the overall precipitation, but
but it remains considerably below average and less than 70% percent of normal for this date over all the Sierra Nevada and even less than 50% in the Southern Sierra Nevada. So it's been drier as you go further south. Now, if you look at the water equivalent of that snow compared to the percent of average for April 1st, which is normally the peak, you can see it's below average and the Northern Sierra Nevada running at around 65% of average, whereas the Southern, of course, is running lower. So conditions in terms of the snowpack are, as shown here, slightly higher than what we saw last year. Look at the local snowpack in Southern California. You can see up near the Big Bear Lake area, and this is thanks to some recent snow as well, San Gregorio Mountain, the location there around 9,500 feet is sitting at 8.5 inches of water. So that is if you take the snow that's sitting up there and melt it, it would be eight and a half inches of water. They gained about an inch in recent precipitation of water. There's the snow that we're talking about. You can see on a satellite image that the snow does cover across the peaks of Southern California, making for beautiful views from the coastal areas and the valley areas, but it is a little deceiving because our snowpack is still not significant. And the reasons that we discussed, the lack of precipitation and the deficits percent of average across much of California and specifically Southern California has led to an increase in the drought conditions. So the latest drought monitor does show increasing drought conditions in the severe to extreme category in the eastern deserts of Southern California, but also some creep and increase across Northwest California and even Southern California. This map shows the most important indication. It's the drought change since a year ago. So we can see severe degradation in the drought or worsening drought across Northern California and also the deserts of Southern California and much of the Intermountain West and Four Corners region. You can see even far Southwest California has moved into worsening drought conditions. So back-to-back -back dry years affecting Northern California and lack of monsoon and now a very dry year affecting much of our desert and Intermountain West. If we look at some computer model data, it also indicates that precipitation chances in late March and early April are there, especially for Southern California initially in late March, early April, and then shifting into Northern California as we go into early April. We also see that temperature trends are indicating that in late March, the storm system potential would give us below average temperatures during that weekly period, and that could continue again into early April. So it's important to note that the temperatures are likely associated with the potential for precipitation in late March, early April. And the NOAA Climate Prediction Outlook for early to mid-April is shown here with precipitation chances above average for much of California and an indication of at least normal conditions as the storminess potentially moves into the Pacific Northwest with the temperatures, whereas much of the country is above average with temperatures and on the dry side. You can see indicated here, the precipitation chances do increase this period in April for much of California.